Patiently waiting to find their forever homes at Darbster Rescue. The Animal Rescue just opened up its third location inside the Mall of New Hampshire, joining Darbster Doggy in Chichester and Darbster Kitty in Manchester. Our other two locations are pretty much at their limit for space. Um, we can't really build up or build out, so finding a new spot where new eyes, new people, and then some more cats and dogs here, it's definitely helped us with that. And help, it does. With all the foot traffic inside the mall, Darbster anticipates a 30% increase in adoptions. So I think that every little bit helps, and being in such a public space means that we're reaching that many more people, giving those last 400 animals the chance for this year. Animals like Sadie. She's very calm and just, just puppy-like and just a happy pup whose new owner, Jessica, found her when the mall rescue opened up. I've been familiar with Darbster. I live in Manchester, but a friend of mine walked in and saw the puppies and said, you need to go check out the puppies at Darbster, so I did. So it's very unique, and it's nice to be able to see this, and it's quieter than a shelter normally is, and they do seem really relaxed and well-socialized. Socializing the animals is key, and Darbster relies on a team of dedicated volunteers like Ross Mangarelli. As soon as I walk in here, I say hi to all the dogs, I wave at them. I always wave at dogs, and I ask them what dog they want me to walk first, and then I'll walk them in the mall or outside the mall, or I'll come to this play area back here, play with them. I'm like a magnet to dogs. I have a dog myself, but um, this is when the dogs need us the most, when they don't have homes or families. So I feel like I'm doing my part to help out, be their friends, walk them, and spend time with them. Darbster works with partners in South Florida to save dogs and cats in need. Since opening up these New Hampshire locations about a decade ago, they've transported about 20,000 animals up from down south. They're all coming from high kill shelters and um, rescues down there that also help with that mission of getting them out and saving their lives. Uh, we've definitely seen an increase in the last couple of years. Lisa Prusha started volunteering with Darbster a few years ago when she lived in Florida. It's overwhelming, I guess, is probably the, uh, a simple way of saying it. The amount of community cats is just never-ending. Um, right now, it's, I mean, it's kitten season there 12 months a year. So it's, there's never a hiatus. Here in New Hampshire, she now assists with ground transports, helping cats and kittens get comfortable in their new temporary home. My favorite part, I guess it's always at the beginning, the very first five minutes of the transport when they arrive, because you get to spend five minutes uncovering all this joy. <laughs> And sometimes a little fear because they're scared, but that I think is the best part. I think everyone here is here for the same reason, is we love them. We think that a lot of them deserve better than what they started off with. Um, I think if you ask every volunteer or staff that's been here, they'll have a favorite or one that's impacted them in a certain way. Um, and they stick with them forever. And when they go home, that's one of the best feelings. Darbster is always looking for extra hands to help out. Imagine putting dog walker or kitten cuddler on your resume. I have to ask people to play with kittens and play with puppies. And that is a major part of my job. Um, it's not a tough ask, but I really do enjoy being able to say, can you come and snuggle with a puppy or play with a cat, kitten for an hour? Um, it's like a dream job. It, it really is. Some volunteers go the extra step to make a lasting impression. I'm the owner of Candle Tree Soy Candles. I have a store right on Main Street, and I was trying to figure out how I can utilize my business to help out the dogs here. So um, I, I donated some candles with pictures of the dogs on them to kind of help spread the words. I've sold them at my store before to help raise some money. Some volunteers bring them hiking, some will bring them down to like Petco or Home Depot or something like that just to get out, or some will just bring them home, let them run around their yard, get some sun, do that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, their goal is to find these animals their perfect match. We just want to make sure it's the right fit 
for both the dog or cat and the adopter. You know, all of these animals here are living creatures. They're not perfect. They're not just going to come out of a out of their kennel and you know know how to sit, know how to stay, know not to you know chew on your shoes. A lot of them do, and we're really lucky that way. But we want to make sure we're getting adopters and, and volunteers and staff that you know are going to put them first and you know treat them like like family and give them the best you know shot at a good life.